All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Data Explorer live demo. My name is Rob Brazer. I'm from our product management team, and I'm located in our headquarters in Raleigh, North Carolina. So just a couple of housekeeping things to get us started. Following this webinar, we will be sending out the recording, so you all will have that available to you. Uh, and throughout this webinar, I encourage you to ask any questions via Q&A. At the end, as time permits, we will try to get through as many questions as we can. Um, and additionally, I encourage you to reach out to us either via the Q&A channel or following the webinar. We'd love to talk to you about your specific needs and goals and how Pendo and Data Explorer can help you achieve those. So let's get started. So Data Explorer, what we're gonna cover today, we'll give you a quick overview of what it is, kind of set the stage for the rest of the demo, give you some insight into why we built it. Uh, then we will uh, talk about querying and running reports on any data in Pendo, and uh, I guess show you how you can spot trends in behavior across different user groups, and really how Data Explorer is an awesome tool to help you iterate on product functionality and create a better overall user experience. So what is Data Explorer? It is a central location for running queries, visualizing and uncovering insights and reporting on any data in Pendo. Uh, as you can see, we have a little screen grab here on the right uh, to you know, give you the little teaser preview. We'll be getting into that in just a second. Now, some of you all uh, who are current Pendo users may be wondering, this sounds a little bit like trends. What's new? Why is this different? Uh, so first, trends will continue to be available. So if you love trends, keep using it. But we think that Data Explorer will be uh, what you want to use once you know all of uh, the features and capabilities that it has. So uh, Data Explorer, it gives you new capabilities, such as accessing all data sources. And by that, I mean feature clicks, page views, track events, guide views, and compare multiple instances of them. Uh, you can also compare segments across data sources and apps. So what we mean by that is you can say, hey, I would like to look at how my guide views impacts a feature click for what we want to see if, you know, this guide that we've built is something that uh, is actually inducing our users to take that feature click behavior that we want. Uh, you can also compare across apps. So let's say you have a web application and you have a mobile application. Data Explorer allows you to compare user behavior between those. Uh, next, summarize data by grouping values. Uh, we have a group by button that you will see in Data Explorer, which allows you to do things such as group uh, your results by, let's say you categorize them into different account sizes. You have mid-market, corporate, strategic, enterprise. You can then take those data sources and what you're hoping to get some insight on and go through uh, and have those, I guess, values grouped by in the visualization and in the table. Next, we've also added the ability to summarize data by different measures. Uh, you currently uh, are able to do total, uh, total number of visitors and total number of accounts. Then you can also do percent of accounts and percent of visitors. That's what exists with trends. With Data Explorer, we have also given you the ability to uh, look at averages and medians. Uh, lastly, we have some new visualization types for you all. Trends has these bar chart and the line chart, whereas Data Explorer continues to have those, but also adds column charts, area charts, and donut charts. So why is this important to you? Uh, you can find critical answers to uh, questions you're trying to uh, answer about your product. How is a specific feature or multiple features in our product being used over time? How are changes we make to the product impacting user engagement and behavior? Uh, this is another good tie-in for you know, using Pendo guides to encourage that behavior. Next, is there a difference in how certain customer cohorts use our product? This is coming at it from the group by perspective. You can look at those uh, different characteristics about those customers or visitors. You can slice and dice it, and you can understand how they act differently. Uh, lastly, are we effectively educating our users about new and improved product functionality? You can identify gaps this way. You can identify, hey, if we expected these user groups to use this feature, let's say we expected 20% of our active users to use this feature, and it's 10%. You can then take a look at that and figure out how can we drive that engagement using Pendo guides or changes to our product. 
So this is the basic framework and you all will see a little bit more of this once I actually pull up the live demo. But this is the basic framework of a data explorer query. Uh, you have uh, at the top, how do you wanna measure this data? As you can see in this slide, it's uh, percent of visitors, but again, it's percent of accounts, total accounts, uh, total visitors, total clicks if we're talking about, or total views if we're talking about page views, and then also the new added average and median. What do you want to measure? We have page views, feature clicks, guide views, track events. Those are all the things that you can do directly from this single pane of glass with Data Explorer. Next, you can specify the time period uh, to say what kind of time range you wanna look at, and then how do you wanna aggregate those? We can do hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. Next, which segments of users do you want to analyze? With Data Explorer, you can uh, compare up to five different segments at the same time. Lastly, how do you wanna cluster or summarize the results group by? Uh, this is one of the new features and it's a really nice way to, if you have really good account and visitor metadata, to slice and dice your results to get those insights that you want about how your customers are using your product. So with that said, let's jump in to the live demo itself. So this page right here is the Data Explorer landing page. It's accessed under the left panel under behavior and then clicking Data Explorer. So let's uh, highlight some of those new things that we talked about. Let's, uh, I guess, let's show both the visualizations and group by. So right here to get started, what I'm doing is I'm selecting a data source. I'm going to select uh, from our Pendo Experience Sandbox. This is just a kind of a, a sandbox website we use for demos. I'm going to select the contacts page. And then from here, I have the option if I wanted to, to go between total, average, median, uh, average and median being the new ones, and then those other four that I've highlighted that currently exist. Now I can add up to five different pages for each data source. So if I wanted to add all of these here, I could. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and keep it a little bit simple and we'll build up. So next, looking at the date range. As I mentioned before, we have some presets for the date range. You can choose a custom date range. You can also specify the aggregation. Uh, this will change based on what you select. Uh, if we look at a daily view, you can use hourly, or if you look at a longer period of time, those monthly will become available. But for the 30 day range, you have daily and weekly options. So let's talk about group by then. Let's say that I want to uh, get a little bit more uh, insight into how different roles are using my product. And by role, let's say you have customer success, product managers, whatnot. So let's go ahead and click into the visitor metadata, click professional role, and then let's run. And one thing I think is cool to see with this is that it's pretty quick. You know, just in a couple seconds after clicking run, I have both the table and the chart output. And now we have our line graph, which will look familiar to users here. You also have the ability to change between our chart types that we talked about uh, our new chart types that we talked about, we have area charts. You can stack that if you wish. And the axis will update dynamically. You can use columns now. This is also a new chart. Bar chart, this will be familiar to the trends folks. And then lastly, donut charts, which is also a new one here. So uh, another thing to take a look at, let's go back to our bar chart, is uh, you can click into the charts. They are interactive and they will load a side panel that will tell you information about the visitors and the accounts associated with it. You can also download a PNG uh, that you can export. And then you can also look at the breakdown below here in a table. So this first instance right here demonstrated how uh, you can use group by and the different chart visualizations. So let's go ahead and refresh the page here and start with another one to let's, I guess, focus on the new calculations that are now available. So let's go to guide views and let's do feature clicks. And this is a really cool thing that I think is gonna be kind of the big draw for a lot of folks here. You can directly tie these two different types of events of guide views and feature clicks to one another. So here I have guide views at the start and I'm looking at this guy that I built that I want to encourage users to click on this uh, feature, which is a launch guide heart. So let's go ahead and pull both of those in here to the visualization. Uh, 
And then let's actually, uh, let's choose a custom date range. Cause I remember when this was added that we had uh, the guide starting around October. So let's see how that new guide ended up affecting the feature clicks for the reason why we built that guide. So we got a little 120 day period here. Let's go ahead and kick this off. So in the blue here, we have our guide views. Again, this guide was not created until around this September 21st date. And we had about pretty uh, consistent use of our launch guide heart feature. Now, uh, once we launched that guide, as you can see, the guide views went up, which is what we'd expect when we launch a new guide. But also the, what our goal with this to increase the feature usage also shows here where you can see, again, you click into it and you can see the visitor and the accounts associated with it. Now we can also take a look at the different measures that we have. So uh, we already looked at the total. Let's look at the percent of accounts. So now we can see that our guide view still here is just a total metric, a quantification of how many people had seen it but then our other access axes here with the people or the accounts that were clicking our launch guide heart feature, it now shows the percent of our total active uh, accounts that use this feature here. And again, you can export these to CSV as well. So now that we've gotten some familiarity with it, I'd like to just go ahead and show that you can save these reports. And then you can directly add them to dashboards. So if we click add to dashboard, you now see that data explorer chart I just made is right here. And it's very nice in that you can easily switch between the two. So now if I have this and want to make some edits, I can go back into it and I can say, let's actually change this back to percent of total, save my changes. Go to dashboard. And now you can see that change back from percent of accounts to total features. Now, while we're here, I've went ahead and pre-built some other charts that will show uh, more capabilities of Data Explorer. And as we were talking about, you can take them from the dashboard and launch them out. Let's take a look at group by uh, with in introducing segments as well. So directly from that dashboard, I've pulled in page views of my five different key pages, I've specified my date range, and I've pulled in a, a segment that I've created where the professional role is either product manager or customer success. So right here you see we have these five different pages. You can compare directly over one another the customer success to product manager with the contacts page views. Same thing with dashboard, all the way down through the five different pages. Now another thing you might be interested in is how many of, uh, how, how did these compare uh, between the, the totals between customer success and product managers? It's not as easy to see here. However, we have that capability here with stacked bar charts where you can now see, oh, these are all my customer success uh, data points. We have accounts, dashboards, customer success, contacts, customer success. We have accounts and these are all the product management ones. So these allow you to see directly and compare, oh, hey, my uh, product managers on the pages I care about are about twice as, or a little bit more than twice as frequently used than by customer success roles. And again, this data is available in the table. You can export it to CSV right here using this download button. But this is just a demonstration of how group by and segments work together. Now let's go back to our last example scrolling through these charts that we've added. And we are going to group by and talk about different uh, data sources and show some averages here. So I've selected again, two different page views. Let's say I'm interested in of the people who go to contacts, how many of them are clicking on select a contact on that page. Now just to highlight a different calculation, I've automatically selected averages for both of these. Um, and I've kept the same professional role uh, segment and group by available. So here you can see the uh, chart associated with it with contacts for product managers and contacts for customer success. The, those are their feature clicks. And here you can see the, or sorry, that's reversed. It's the contacts page 
And here you can see the features of selected contact between uh, product manager and customer success. So this has been a brief demo of the capabilities of Data Explorer and everything that it can do. We hope that this was uh, useful to you all and we're looking forward to answering your questions. So one question that has come in, uh, can we group by all visitor or account metadata fields or only by certain metadata types, strings, text, et cetera? So right now you can do uh, group by with Boolean fields and text and string based fields. We are, uh, on the, we are planning to work on doing things such as greater than, between, less than, so your more numerical comparisons. But right now we are focused on text, strings, and Booleans. So uh, how do you acquire data about page visits, clicks, et cetera? Um, this is, if, I think this is more of a foundational Pendo question of how do you tag pages and features and clicks? So part of the Pendo process is we integrate with your web application and we allow you to tag certain pages that you care about and features that you care about and events that you care about. And then we can help, uh, once you've done that, do all these visualizations very easily. One nice thing about Pendo is we have the retroactive capabilities where let's say that you have installed Pendo on your website and you've only tagged a couple of pages. Uh, the good news is, is that let's say you later decide, oh, I didn't tag a page when I started, but I wanted to. So you can go ahead and tag that pages page and we will retroactively have that data associated with that tag that then you can surface. So point being, you don't have to tag everything for data collection to start once you've installed Pendo. You can go back, get that information and it will just work for you. So another question, will the data source types always be limited to two and the data source objects to five data sources per type? Uh, currently that is the plan to have two data sources uh, and five objects per data source type. Uh, we are looking at ways to continue to expand that. However, right now we feel like that's a good amount to allow people to make the comparisons that they want and not have the visualization or table become too messy. Another question for date range presets is, could we potentially add a last 14 days? Uh, we could potentially do that. Um, it's also something that it would just be a couple extra clicks there. You could say uh, last, seven days and or last 30 days, which would be the default and quickly click custom date range. And then you could easily just make two more clicks and it would show you, uh, you'd already be on the, the month that you would want to select those last 14 days. So let's see here, we have a longer one. In your example, stacked bar chart of customer success and product manager across pages. Can you ensure that the same page is the same color in each bar so it makes it easier to visually compare? Say the page views of page X between CS roles and PMs. Let me just read that one more time. Can you ensure that the same page is the same color in each bar so it makes it easier to visually compare? So if I'm thinking the same page, that means let's say we're talking again about that contacts page. To me, I'd want the colors to be different so I could tell the difference between CS and PM roles. So potentially I might be uh, not understanding the question correctly, but right now we want that color differentiation so I can see page views between CS as a difference between page views uh, between the product managers. So with that said, uh, thank you all for your questions. I uh, hope this was helpful for you today. Please reach out to us and ask questions and we can talk about how Data Explorer can help your company and your product achieve its goals. Uh, again, this is Rob Brazer from the product team at Pendo in Raleigh, North Carolina. Thank you all for joining.